Welcome back to part 4. In this part we'll cover some common errors and misconceptions with conditionals and logical expressions in code. Consider the following piece of code. The intention is that we check the value stored in A to see if it is between 0 and 10. This code will compile and execute, but it won't work for certain values. Let's walk through and see what happens in this code when the value stored in A is 20. The first comparison is evaluated and since 0 is less than or equal to 20, it evaluates to true. However, in many C implementations, this means that it will result in 1. When the next comparison is evaluated, it evaluates to true since 1 is less than or equal to 10. However, this is clearly wrong, as 20 does not lie within the intended range. The proper solution is to break up each of the comparisons using a logical AND operator. Each operand should only be a single true or false value. Here's another common error. Again, this piece of code will compile and run, but it won't give correct results. The mistake is that we used a single equal sign, making this an assignment rather than an equality comparison. By assigning a value of 10 to A, we not only change the value of A, but the resulting value of 10 is used in the conditional's truth value. Since A is true, the body of this if statement is executed regardless of the original value of A. Avoid this by using a proper style and white space so that it's easy to spot mistakes like this. Using a proper linter would also easily catch a mistake like this. See the course website for more information on linters. You may also have to be careful when you place a semicolon in your code. In general, semicolons only go after executable statements. An if statement is a condition that is checked, not really an executable statement. Again, this example code will compile and run, but it will give incorrect results. A conditional statement is bound to the next block of code. In this case, the next block of code is empty as denoted by the erroneous semicolon. The result is that the print statement will execute regardless of the value of A. Again, a linter would easily find such a mistake. Another common error is using non-numerical comparisons. You can use numerical comparison operators on single char values and character literals. For example, you can check if a particular character stores either a lowercase or an uppercase C, as in this example. You can do this because characters have a numerical value as associated in the ASCII text table. However, you cannot use numerical comparisons on full strings. Checking for equality among strings, which we'll cover in more detail later on, is never correct. Other errors arise from misunderstandings as to how operators are evaluated. Recall that just as in math, multiplication and division are evaluated before addition and subtraction. Likewise, any logical AND operator is evaluated before any logical OR operator in a left-to-right manner. So the following logical statements are not equivalent. In the first, the parentheses increase the precedence of the OR operator so that it's evaluated first. But in the second, the AND is evaluated before the OR because it has a higher order of precedence. In general, use parentheses when necessary. In fact, it's generally best practice to use them even when it's not necessary to clearly express the intent of your code. Finally, another issue is that of short-circuiting. Consider a logical AND operator on two variables A and B. If A evaluates to false, then it does not matter what B evaluates to. Since A is false, the entire expression is false, whether B is true or false. Consequently, B is ignored and not evaluated. A similar situation occurs with the logical OR operator. If the first value evaluates to true, then it doesn't matter what the value of b is. a being true makes the entire expression true. As a consequence, b is not evaluated. This phenomenon is known as short-circuiting because the evaluation of a logical expression ends prematurely and is short-circuited. It is common to the vast majority of programming languages. There are historic reasons for why this is. 40 to 50 years ago, if you could optimize your program by skipping unnecessary steps, you did. Even saving a few CPU cycles had a significant benefit back then. On modern computers, this is not so important, but programmers have come to expect this behavior, and so most programming languages still provide short-circuiting. In fact, there are a lot of common idioms that rely on short-circuiting in code. Performing a null pointer check before examining a value is common. If A is null, then the second potentially dangerous operation is not evaluated. We'll revisit this issue later on when we get to pointers.